Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Follow Your Passion. Let me introduce my guest of today. Her name is Vanessa Ringel. Uh, Vanessa started her career in marketing, and when she was the head matchmaker at Three Day Rule Incorporated, she was infused with a deep understanding of dating and relationships. After overseeing hundreds of client matches and single events, she realized it's really an inside out job. When you're in alignment, that's when love manifests. And that led to the start of Gravitas in June 2016. So currently she's celebrating her six years in business. Uh, Vanessa is trained in spiritual psychology, hypnotherapy, and holds a master certification in neurolinguistic programming. And besides that, she also holds an MBA. Her company is specialized in transforming subconscious patterns that get in the way of your heart's desire. And just like myself, Vanessa is obsessed with learning and personal growth, always searching for new tools to be of greater service to our clients. So please welcome fellow internal student, Vanessa Rengel. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah. So I love to see that you're uh, working with subconscious patterns, uh, that you're also trained in hypnotherapy and NLP, because that's a bit of my background as well when I started my entrepreneurial journey. So how did you come to, to Gravitas? Could you explain the name? How did you come to the name? So I, will, I wanted a name that really encapsulates in one word the, the kind of energetic shift that needs to happen mm -hmm. uh, in order to attract what your heart desires. <clears throat> and gravitas really spoke to me i wanted something that had like that kind of a the gravitas i wanted a, a name with gravitas and um and then i love that it really is something that is that you really you can feel it right when someone has gravitas when someone has that energetic quality that is just so so strong so magnetic and so that was what i wanted to help people to be able to manifest and to be able to create th their dreams it's like they need to have that magnetic quality and how you can create that it's like you don't have to be born with it it's something that can be fostered that can be created and i feel yeah that it's, it's kind of like an empowering message like you can tap into your energy into your power and then attract your heart's desire and that's like what gravitas symbolizes nice nice so uh, I must totally agree with you that uh, it is actually an inside out job, you know, that uh, when you start loving yourself and feel compassionate about yourself and be your true authentic self, that you will attract the people that uh, love you for who you truly are and not who you're destined to be. Um, so could you tell me about this realization you had? Did it just came like that or did it, did it really took some time to get it? how much love is an inside out job. Yeah. I mean, through my own journey and through working with so many clients as a matchmaker, I realized that, you know, how important, I mean, you can call it mindset, you can call it self-love, you can call it a lot of different things, but it's like that the way you show up matters and the way you feel about yourself and how, how, who, how you are, like how you are doing and in your, within yourself makes a huge difference with the date. So like you could be matched with great people, but if you're in a bad place or if you're not loving yourself, or if you are going to sabotage it, or if you're attracted to people who, who treat you badly, or if you, you're stuck in all these dynamics and patterns, uh, that it doesn't matter who you get matched with. It's not going to work. And it's going to be a painful experience because you're coming from that place. And so when you are in that state of love, which like, like self-love and feeling like, like your energy is elevated and feeling in that really high place. It's like you meet people and all these things manifest in a completely different way. And I think everyone has had that experience of like when it rains, it pours. And when, when things are good, like sometimes it's like everything suddenly feels amazing. And like so many other great things happen when you're already in a high place. And a lot of it is because of that. It's that energy of where you're at is contagious and is it's like an antenna for certain things. And so with my clients, like as a matchmaker, I would just see, you know, I would just see the patterns and how, like, I felt so helpless in, in, because in, no matter who I matched them with, like, they were not paying me to coach them, they were paying me to match them. And so I could see that, like, you know, let's say a woman who loved, she kept going for the men who were clearly not into her, clearly unavailable, or like, there was a man who just kept, like, going for uh, these, 
he, I mean, he, and he was such a catch, right? But he wanted this like kind of um, like like a trophy kind of wife, but like it was mm. more to, he wanted something really impressive that was almost impossible. And it was really, to me, you know, from a psychological and I had, you know, had a lot of interest in psychology since I was young. So, I mean, I was seeing it from that lens of like, wow, like he's clearly wanting to prove something to someone. Um, and it's less about him finding love and more about proving something. And, um, and I think he had been kind of a nerd, you know, he was one of these like Silicon Valley nerds that made it big and wanted to prove to everyone that he was cool now, uh, basically. And, uh, and, and I get that, but it's like, that's not how you want to choose your partner based on those uh, limited patterns and on that, like an ego thing, basically. And yeah. so I saw that and then with myself too, like myself, I kept being attracted to to things that were into relationships that were very much patterns from my childhood and and then I realized like, why you know I'm meeting so many men I'm dating like I had no problem meeting men or dating but like it would just blow up every time and because I kept picking people where it was like recreating the same dynamics from childhood so then I realized like, wow I need to change I need to change what I'm attracted to what I'm being drawn to and the energy I'm bringing to it. And then when I did that, I manifested my husband really quickly. I mean, like I call it manifested, but basically met my husband, attracted him really quickly. And it was like a very different kind of relationship, like way, um, way less drama <laughs> and like just <laughs> totally different. And then I realized like, oh yeah, like you, you can change it so quickly when you change. And it's, that's really the fastest, best way. And it's a better, much better investment in my opinion than like anything else is investing in yourself. Yeah, definitely. And I, uh, I have an advanced sales masterclass and I always use this metaphor in it as uh, a single woman who is about N20, early 30s. She's still single and she desperately wants a man because her friends already have a relationship, or maybe even started a family. And she wants it for herself as well because once she got this Prince Charming, she's her life is complete she can enjoy life share things stuff like that but as long as she's desperate looking for this prince charming who is she attracting people that are in the market for a desperate woman right and that's that's the kind of person that always comes home with the, with the wrong man and everybody i tell this to you know they, they can pinpoint some friends in their neighborhood yeah i know exactly who you mean you know she was that or he was just like that while if, if, if that single woman is just enjoying herself, being a true authentic self, you know, enjoy life, uh, do the things she loves to do, she will attract totally different men. And that will, Prince Charming will be one of them because he will be attracted to her for who she truly is. And I think that that's, that's the key message that, that you're sharing as well, is that when you're just being yourself and love yourself and be compassionate uh, for yourself, um, people will be attracted to the true uh, authentic self and not for the person you think you need to be in order to attract somebody. Mm, yes, absolutely. I completely agree with the, with that. I think that that, that is so important. Like if, in, to be your authentic self, like that's how you attract people that are right for you. And, you know, instead of trying to be all the things. And I think we do, we get caught up in like what we think people want and what society wants and, and so then, you know, you want to be liked by everyone. And by doing that, you don't show your true self. And so the person who would really like you is not even going to see you. They're not going to even, they're, it's not going to register for that. So I think absolutely, yes. And I also think that there isn't really a Prince Charming. Uh, so I, I don't think, I don't believe in Prince Charming. And I also don't think that, um, that like, that just well also just living your best life like living your best life is great and just you know and, and I think that is important but I think it's also important because I also see people on the other side of it who are just living their best life and they're like when the right person comes like it'll just like the universe will bring it to me and it'll just work out and I don't I don't believe in that either I do think you need to like if you want something you need to put effort and energy towards that so um so yes, living your best life, but also putting the energy and effort towards the thing you want, because otherwise, I mean, you wouldn't treat anything else that way, right? Like with the job, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm just going to like live my best life and the right job will show up. Like most people will go and apply to jobs and they'll make an effort towards it and they'll, they'll put energy towards it. And I think it's like, you do need to put energy towards your love life, your relationships, mm -hmm. if you want yeah. that. Um, 
And I think that that's another kind of like a uh, misconception I feel in society, especially for women that like women should not make any, like that the man will find you and pursue you. But like most men that I found, like a lot of, well, there's, and there's studies on this, like a lot of the, the best, like the kind of guys that want to settle down and want marriage and that are more kind of sensitive and they can be more introverted too. And they're not always the guys who are going to come up to you and hit on you and be so aggressive. Yeah. So I think it's like, it's both. Yes. You want to live your best life. Maybe there isn't a Prince Charming, but there is your Prince Charming. There's like the person who's right for you, right? Who's not going to be a Prince yeah, Charming. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or your soulmate, your person. And I think that he'll find you when you're being really authentic, but you're also like out there and you're putting yourself out there. Oh, definitely. You know, it, it's the same in business as well and in relationships as well. You don't want to be the world's best kept secret. <laughs> you need to be out there. You, you need to be visible. Otherwise, people won't find you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be the world's best kept secret. I like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So tell me about uh, Gravitas because you help people to to uh, transform sub uh, subconscious patterns that get in the way of your heart's desire. Is that uh, all based on uh, love and relationships or is it is it more than that? Is it also in business or whatever passion they have? Or Yeah. That's a great question. I mean, online I niched for business, for like for love. Like I kind of cater more to women um, and love and relationships online, but offline and really even like somehow I've attracted people like all all kinds of people. Really, like I can help. Like Gravitas is really about like attracting the life of your dreams and really living into that life. And that you know when you're stuck in any way, like and I've worked with men, I've worked with people on business stuff. I've worked with people in health stuff. Like it's really with anything uh, that you, when you feel stuck in something and you're wanting to manifest something different, like basically wanting to and manifest, what is that? It's to create something different, to create a different kind of life. And you're feeling stuck. Like that is what I, my specialty is in, in unblocking that and, and helping you to live into the life that you want. And I do work. I work with anyone on anything. I've worked on uh, even alcoholism, I've worked on um, like all kinds of things, like addictions, like uh, people who are in relationships that are unsatisfied in their relationships, like couples that are struggling or feeling stuck. I've worked with um, even, yeah, like all kinds of, like basically it works for anything really. It's just more that like for online, I was told I had to niche, right? Like from oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually feel very like, sometimes, and this is like on the business side of it, I feel a little like, uh, What's the word when you're kind of like put in a little box uh, because I had to niche for this and I actually am thinking to probably open it up because I really, I like working with everyone on everything and I don't, um, and while I have worked with a lot of women on love and on relationships and manifesting a partner and all that, and that's my, my course is Manifest Your Soulmate and it is catered to women manifesting a partner. And it's because, I mean, I just, I've had a lot of, like I've manifested for some reason, a lot, a lot of women have sought me out for that. Right. But that's yeah. not, it really works for anything. And I've had people take the course to change their results in their career. Um, and I've, I've had men take the course. Like I've had, you know, different people. Cause it, like I said, the same, it's like the same, it's a framework. It's a framework that can be applied to anything in your life. And so that you yeah. can change the results that you're getting. Mm -hmm. And so, and that same framework I've used for everything I used to manifest my house, my husband, my baby, my, um, my weight, like I lost 30 pounds in my thirties. I, I used it for pain that I had in my body, like stagnant pain. Like I, I manifested like a healthier body I manifested, um, I'm trying to think what else I've used it for. <laughs> I've used it, I've used it for so many things. Like the framework basically works for it for anything. Yeah. Nice. And I, I, I totally get where you're getting, uh, where you're coming from, because when I started my entrepreneurial journey seven years ago, I started out as a hypnotherapist and as a hypnotherapist and the training you got, you know, you got all the tools and skills to help everybody. Yeah. But if you want to help everybody, you're actually helping nobody because you're not giving the people a reason to come to you. Yeah. So when you're starting out, it's better to have a niche so that you give people a reason to come to you. You know, yeah. if they identify themselves with that niche, uh, they automatically uh, assume, of course, that you are specialized in it or have expertise in that field. Otherwise, you wouldn't have that niche. Mm. And uh, 
Um, what one of my coaches also said, you know, uh, when you want to do a business, you know, do you want to fish in a small pond and catch every fish in it? Or would you like to fish in the ocean, hoping that one will bite? And the one that bites, hopefully that will be ideal client, but you never know, of course, in the big ocean. So at, especially in the beginning, uh, having a niche is very key to, to uh, build momentum with your, with your business. And, um, but it, it feels contradictionary because especially when you're starting out, you want to help as many people, you know, and you want to get paid for it. And by niching down, you're more or less saying no to, to potential clients that could pay your bills. And that, yeah. that, that doesn't feel right. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. And also alienating people, right? Because I have to speak to people as if they're all women, but I have a lot of men who follow me and who are interested in my content. And I meet men all the time that like are, are very interested, want to work with me. And then they, I, I tell them to check out my website or my, my Instagram, and it's all very catered to women. Uh, you know, and at first it was even all pink. It was like all pink and it was just like very, you know, very feminine. And, um, yeah. and then they're like, do you ever, work? you know, and I think it looks like I never work with men, but I do. And I think, uh, and I love working with men, you know, so it's just, I feel like it kind of encapsulated me. And I agree. I agree. I probably did need a niche to start out, but I think at this point I probably don't anymore. And, um, and I think sometimes it can serve you to have a niche for a while. And then at some point it doesn't, you know, and it, 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 it was fine for a while, but now I feel like it doesn't resonate anymore to just focus on that because there's just so many things that I, I want to help people with um, that are not that, like that I, I feel very passionate about. Yeah. Like right now I'm very passionate about abundance, for example, like helping people tap into more abundant mindset and to manifesting more money. And like, I'm at that place in my journey where I'm working on that. So I think it's also like when you're working on certain things, like that's the thing that's most exciting. And when I was manifesting my partner, my soulmate in love and all of that, like I, that was what I was most interested in. Um, yeah, yeah. And so I, I ended up attracting a lot of people that were into that. And then I, and then it's like, you can, you can teach people once you overcome a certain hurdle or a certain thing, you can teach them how to get there. Uh, and then, you know, and that's really fun for a while, but then at some point you kind of like move on to like, to other things. I, I'm at the point where there's just so many things that I, I want to help people with and that I want to put out in the world. And, um, and there's, and there's so many opportunities for spiritual growth and a need for this right now in, in, in many areas that oh, I definitely. want to, yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to be able to expand and, and support people in all of those areas. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, it's logical because, um, you're, you're now six years in business. So you're evolving, you're growing, you're leveling up your business. So it's, it's only logical that you're, uh, that you're expanding your business. You're, you're expanding your niche. You know, mm -hmm. my first true niche was helping technical entrepreneurs to, um, uh, empowering them to boost the business and themselves. And last year I decided to, to add women or, or actually female entrepreneurs to my niche as well, because the, the challenges they're facing, they're uh, more similar than you might think. Um, and my, my coaching program works for both parties, you know, and it works for better, it, it works for more parties as well. You know, men are well, men that are not technical, but want to empower themselves as well are more than welcome to join me in my, in my program. Yeah. And, and, but there's, I love that. there's have you course... found that, that there's, there's, that there's more similarity when you get like, after you've met with a certain amount of people, like you start as a hypnotherapist, hypnotherapist and everything, you must see that like people probably think all their problems are so unique, but as you do it, and then when you go really deep with it, you feel like all the problems are really similar. Oh you yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the, the, they just manifest in different, different styles. Yeah. But when you dive deep indeed, you know, you see that you see the same things. You know, yeah. it's, it's the, the, most of my clients that are introvert, you know, so they don't like to, to boost themselves, so to speak, you know, to speak, speak out for themselves. Uh, maybe it's a bit insecurity they have, or they, they feel that others are much farther than they are in the, in their journey, but everybody is unique and have their own special gifts and talents and they should cherish it and don't compare themselves with others. You know, they should believe in themselves and feel the strength within them and that they have added value that they can make a positive impact uh, uh, to the world. And the moment yeah. they get it, that's when they're leveling up the business. Yeah. 
definitely yeah I think it's um it's so interesting because I think we all you know tend to think that we're so alone in our problems and we're that and that our problems are are very unique and no one's going to understand us and I think that's the ego but really it's collective and the wounds are collective and when like with the course that I, I created I think for a lot of people, they might think like manifesting love or changing their relationship patterns is something that they need a one-on-one person to talk to because it's so specific or so personal. But actually I found that it's like, it's the same thing over and over again. Like as I talked, you know, as and, and at this point I've worked with hundreds of people, you know, including like being a matchmaker and, and this, and, and, and I've just seen that like, when you go deep enough, it's always about the same things. Um, so the framework really does work for everyone. And I almost, at this point, I require it. If anybody wants to work with me one-on-one, I've had a few people reach out where they want to work with me one-on-one and I'm not really taking new clients, but if I was to take any new client, I would, I would, the prerequisite would be to, to do the course so that they, cause then they, they have like a, a baseline and a sense of the framework and they have a sense of how things work and how the mind works and all of that. And then once they have, um, that understanding and that knowledge and they can see things through that filter then we can go exponentially deeper if we work one-on-one and not to say that there isn't value in one-on-one um because there's accountability like that obviously the accountability piece of it you can't get from a course no Um, definitely not but you do get a lot of the stuff and it's for a fraction of the cost and you get so much of the same um of the value and you also get access to keep you know you can keep uh, with, like with hypnosis, like some part of it is also like rewiring is like that the consistency and being able to if you're consistent and if you can be accountable to yourself, then you can see it very often and you can I have hypnosis in the course. So it's like you can you can basically rewire yourself and, and hypnotize yourself to change your patterns and to change your your dynamics uh, with that, which I think can be extremely powerful versus like one on one, like there's only so much time, right? But you can do this, like if you were really committed, you could do this like very often and really rewire yourself quickly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah. it's it's wonderful, you know, one of the mind shifts that I made myself was um, I saw a lot of, a lot of uh, successful people online, you know, coaches, therapists, uh, so-called gurus. And at first I thought, you know, I will never achieve that. You know, that's not for me. Until I made this this huge mindset for me at least that i just started thinking if they can do it why shouldn't i be able to to achieve that right they're not so different than i am they're not smarter than i am or i just have to look at how they're doing it and see how i can apply it in my own life and that's yeah. that's just a major shift you know and it, it it's a, it might be something small for somebody but it can it can have a huge impact for the other person Yes. And I know it, it did for me, so. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's so much is mindset. I feel like 80% of everything in your life, of, of the results you get is mindset. And so when you change, like you said, it's it's so simple. Like sometimes you just change the mindset and then the results are so different. You probably wouldn't be doing this podcast if you hadn't changed that mindset, right? Like you wouldn't, if you were like, oh, that, that it's, I can't do that. If they're, you know, we're, they're different than I am. And I, you know, I could never do what they're doing, which I think is a very common thing that it kind of imposter syndrome idea yeah. that like, like, you know, I, who am I to do that? Who am I not to do that? Right. And then, um, and then when you, you know, when you start to change that thinking, then you can, you can create a podcast, you can create a, this, you can do all these things. They can come easily and naturally because you believe in yourself, because it's like the belief is always at the core of everything. And when you change the belief, then all the results will be different. Like all the actions, your feelings about things, like everything will be different and you'll ultimately yeah. manifest a different reality. Definitely. You know, I, I think one of my core beliefs is also if, if I think of something to do or whatever, then it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. I love that. Yeah. Having like statements like that, that you say to yourself, the affirmations, if you, and they only work if you believe them which I think is, is a fallacy. People think, oh, if I just say I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, then I'll feel worthy. But if you don't believe it, like it's all about the energy behind it and the beliefs. Oh yeah. You, yeah. Believe, you have to believe them. But if you like, if I believe everything always works out for me, things always work out for me. And like, I really believe it, then I'm going to find evidence for that. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to find evidence for it. 
and then I'm going yeah. to create that reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 what you said. It's it's not just a thought or a belief. It's it's more than that. It's a feeling. It's it's something internally that drives you, and you just know it by heart. It's the truth for you, and then it will manifest or it or be become reality. And that's um, if if you don't believe it yourself, you know. Let's say that. Um, Let's say that you say to yourself, um, I want to be a millionaire, right? It, it's a, a dream somebody might have. But if you say it, I want to be a millionaire, you're actually saying, I'm not a millionaire right now. I, it's not me right now. And that then you will never become this millionaire. But if you have the mindset, you know, I'm already a millionaire. The money is just on uh, the wrong bank bank account. It's a different story, right? You, you could yeah. feel like a millionaire. It doesn't mean that you got to spend money like a millionaire. Yeah, that's the thing. At some point, it could be that where you're delusional. Like, at what point is there the line between? Like, if you see, I don't know if you've seen um, some. There's a lot of shows right now about con artists, like the Inventing Anna. Have you seen Inventing Anna? No, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, well, I'll make, I make a note. <laughs> All these shows that are very popular right now about people that are based on true stories of people um, kind of and kind of taking manifesting too far in a way where like they basically believed a completely different reality. I mean, I don't know if they believed it, but they they portrayed a completely different reality than, than what was true um, of trying to fake it till they make it kind of thing. But to the point yeah. where they're like full on, you know, lying and doing all kinds of things that are, you know, kind of scary where it's like they, you know they really and like at what point is there like a line between you know like this is the part i find i find interesting it's like let's say that yeah i want to be a millionaire right or versus i am a millionaire and i believe i'm a millionaire and it's just like the money's in the wrong bank account but it's coming to me soon but then how do you behave differently and how do you how do you do you spend like a millionaire would you say or do you or do you wait no i'll i'll just um it, it's what I said. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, right? It, it's, I can't access the money. So obviously I can't spend it, but it's just a matter of time that the bank account will be opened and I'll have access to it. Yeah. Right. But it's this, it's this, like this, almost this knowing that it will become reality, you know, and it might not be tomorrow or next week, but it's just this, this knowing that makes your, uh, look for opportunities, you know, and you start seeing opportunities and you start taking action towards yeah. the right direction. And I think, I like that, that, I that's think it's clear. like, it's like faith, right? It's kind of like you have faith, faith yeah. that it's going to happen. And, but like with a certainty, it's almost different than faith because faith is like, you believe, but you're like, I don't know. Yeah. It's the faith and it's like a certainty in the faith. Right. Um, right. that, that it is, it's a matter of, of when it's going to happen and I'm going to live as if it's going to happen, but I'm also going to like, you know, be aware of the reality today so far, yeah, like definitely. Without, yeah, yeah. Without completely losing touch of the current reality. Cause I think there's also that like, yeah, yeah. and do everything <laughs> in my power to get there. Cause it's also like, I think the, the, the inspired action is the piece that's missing in a lot of the manifestation things, which is where I, I take it a little more practically. Cause I'm, I'm also, I was raised very analytically and you know, my family's right. So I, I don't have the kind of spiritual woo woo type of background. And so I feel like I'm the one who like, like went rogue and went all woo, -woo. but and I do, I believe hundred percent in energy and in all these things. And I, I went very spiritual, but I also have that analytical side of me. That's like very strong. And I do think like mer i think both can can work towards the same thing i think it can work together like it doesn't have to be one or the other and i think oh, you definitely can, you can like do things in your power to make it happen like you don't need to yeah. just think about it or imagine or have faith you know faith like they say pray to allah and tie your horse uh i don't know if you heard of this like pray uh -huh. to allah and, and, and tie your horse it's like yeah you pray but you also tie you don't just like leave the horse untied because it might run away <laughs> like you yeah, yeah. Both, both things yeah yeah, yeah, I, I have a, a very analytical mind myself as well. You know, I'm a master of science in electrical engineering, so I've done enough of that science stuff, so to speak. But it's um, 
you you still have to use common sense, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's just what you said, you know, if you're not going out there, you're not getting anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can have the money to buy groceries, but if you don't go to the supermarket, you know, they're not coming to you. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, you have to take action. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it stays a dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's like you need to do everything in your power to make it happen, and then the universe will conspire with you to make it exactly. happen. Exactly. Like at that point, but if, if you're, like, if you think about it, like a kid, I don't know, or like if you were a parent, right, and your kid wants something, but they're just sitting there watching TV saying they want it, but, like, they're not doing anything for it, then you might not feel so compelled to help them. Versus if you see that they're trying really hard, they're doing everything in their power. And then at some point you're like, okay, I'm going to help them get it. Cause like you feel, you can feel how hard they're working for it and how much they, they care about it. And so yeah. I think it, there's something of that too. Like you want to put everything, like everything you possibly can towards the thing you want. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's also, you, you have to, they have to become self-sufficient, you know, they should be able to do things themselves you know and that's i've got two boys and sometimes when we're a friend very small thing you know and and my boys are used to it um when we're eating and and somebody says me could you hand me the sauce and i look at the sauce and say yes i could do that and uh uh, oh could you please give me the sauce sure and then i'll give it to them but i I love that that's such a good idea i'm gonna do that with my kid (laughs) (laughs) i every time i'm like why like what's the magic word but you're right just be like yes i could do that um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't take action and then i may be puzzled and so why don't you do it? well you just ask me if i could do it you know uh i can <laughs> does it say i have to do it <laughs> that's funny yeah so uh, yeah. are you still using a lot of hypnotherapy in your practice in, in, in your day-to-day activities my course has a lot of hypnotherapy in it and um and meditations and like all it's all about subconscious reprogramming yeah and uh and and i don't i only see a couple one-on-one clients so i don't i'm not seeing that many one-on-one clients at this point because i uh, am more focused on the course and other things Um, i'm developing a group program as well uh which i'll launch soon uh and in that i will use some hypnosis as well because yeah i think it's hypnosis when it's directed is, is super powerful I think hypnotherapists or hypnosis isn't, it's not the, in my opinion, it's like, it's like a means to an end. So it's like when you have someone who knows, like is doing all the deeper work of getting clear on what you want and the blocks and everything. And then you use hypnosis, it just makes it that much more powerful. It it makes it go deeper. It makes the change last longer. Like it's just like, it's, it's a, it's almost like a, a really strong enhancement, but I don't think it's the only thing. It's like the, it's like a thing that I, I use in conjunction with everything else. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, and it's, it's much more than what people think of it, right? The, a, a lot of people associate hypnosis with stage hypnosis, which is a very yeah, small like niche. A or, yeah, no. Exactly. You know, it's a very small niche within the whole hypnotherapy world. Um, but it's the, the guided meditations, it's the visualizations, you know, it's the com- uh, conversational hypnosis. There's so many sites about hypnosis um i might even say that when i'm working with clients i might even use it subconsciously that i'm not even aware that i'm using some tools that people would call hypnosis or nlp or whatever you know but it's it's ingrained in my system so i can never say um i'm not sure maybe i don't know (laughs) yeah there's things about you know i'm I'm not sure if you're familiar with a mind-bending language or uh, things like that. It, it's so wonderful, you know, and it's also part of hypnosis. And um, it's hard not to use it, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> and it, yeah. it, it, it's, it's what you said, you know, it's a tool. It's, it's, it's a talent. It's a gift. It, it's a skill we can use to help our clients uh, make fast transformations. Definitely. Yeah, and I think people think, I, I come across, I'm sure you too, uh, people who think they can't be hypnotized. Like, oh, I don't think I could be hypnotized or um you know or whatever and basically everyone well everyone has been hypnotized because it's just a state of being between awake and asleep we all go through hypnosis every morning when we wake up and you know at night when we go to bed and when you're driving and you miss like an exit on the freeway because you've been so zoned out on something you were in a state of hypnosis it's just that your critical mind shut down 
And so yeah. you're much more receptive. And that's why like what you watch right before you go to sleep is very powerful and will affect your dreams and will enter your subconscious mind a lot quicker. Um, and the first thing you see in the morning, like that, those things are important because they're the things that, um, that they go deeper into your, into your mind because you don't have your critical mind is not quite working yet or is like has already shut down. So that's all that hypnosis is. And everybody can be hypnotized. Uh, a big thing of it is just trust, like, you know, picking someone you trust and letting yourself be hypnotized. So if you don't want to be hypnotized and you resist it uh, and yeah. you're scared of it, then, then you won't be hypnotized in that moment by that person. But like, that doesn't mean that you haven't already been through it. Cause like I said, everyone goes through it just being between awake and asleep. Yeah, definitely. You know, I will say that everybody can be hypnotized as long as they want to change. Yeah. If they don't want it, I don't even start it. You, we can't change anyone. Like only exactly. they can change themselves. Like my clients, yeah, I can't, I can't change anything for them. I can only facilitate as far as they're willing to go. Exactly. Um, you know, yeah. it's a cooperation with their subconscious and we can only advise and we can guide them, but it's their subconscious that's making the change. Yeah. It's so fascinating. I could, I could talk about all this stuff forever. Unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, I don't, I have to, I have to pick up my, my son from summer school. Uh, and I have to leave in like a couple of minutes, but I have loved talking to you. I feel like I could like this kind of thing is I'm very passionate about it. I think we need more people in this industry, even though there's, you could say there's like so many coaches um, I feel like there, there's such a need for coaching for great coaches. I think it's rare to find great coaches while there yeah. might be a ton of coaches, like to find a really great coach who's really well-trained, who really can get to the bottom of things and shift things for you and, or like not shift things for you, but shift things with you. Right. And really change the results that you're getting um, on a yeah. deep level is I think rare. Like there's still a lot of need for that, for people who are trained in subconscious reprogramming. I can only second that, Vanessa. Um, and I also feel we could talk for hours on this. Um, I just have three questions left for you. Um, first question, is there any story of a client that comes to mind that had great success working with you that you could uh, sh share in yes. the podcast? Yes, I mean, I have a bunch. Um, I've had a few manifest their soulmates, like quite a few. I would say maybe at this point, I don't know, maybe... I don't want to say an exact number, but it's somewhere like in the last few years, I've had maybe like, I don't know, I, I should count this, like some <laughs> around 10, around 10, oh, nice. which is a lot considering um, like the amount of people that I've been able to, because I don't, I don't take on like a ton of clients. So it's um, yeah, like I had, I had one client where on her second session with me, so she was in her late thirties and she had struggled with dating and, and met all like guys who just were like very um, disrespectful to her and did not want to commit. And she had that kind of tendency of attracting that. And then on the second session, we did a very powerful rewiring technique with, uh, with timeline therapy. And we basically changed the, the belief she had around this mm -hmm. and that had come from childhood, from her parents' divorce, from things like that. And then like right after that met her soulmate and she's now married to has a baby is really happy a uh, completely different level of relationship, treated her like a queen from the beginning. And uh, and yeah, and she attributes it. She's one of my testimonials. I have a bunch of testimonials on my website, uh, begravitas.com uh, forward slash praise. And, nice. and there you can see like I have, yeah, a bunch of videos of different uh, stories, testimonials from the clients themselves. I think there's no, there's no better way to hear it than from the clients themselves, right? Than, that versus oh, me. definitely, definitely. Yeah. So... If you could share a little tip or a little piece of wisdom with the audience to inspire them as well, what would it be? Uh, I would say, I mean, my, my motto, like love is an inside out job, like focus on, yeah, like invest in yourself, invest in your, in what you care about. If, if it's important for you to find love or to change these patterns, if you care about it, if it's a priority, then, then show the universe by doing everything in your power to make that happen. So, and that means like, yeah, invest in a coach, invest in a course, invest in like, take the time and the energy to, to change the results that you're getting because, um, yeah, I mean, I think I see so many people who say that it's important or that they want it, but then they don't invest in it. And it's like, 
well, if you're not willing to put energy, money, anything, whatever you call it, because really money is, is a type of energy, right? But if you're not willing to invest yeah. in yourself and invest in it, then how do you expect someone else to? Um, and, and how do you expect to, to change that if you're not making it a priority? So yeah, I would say that. Perfect. Great advice, Vanessa. So yeah. you already gave a little, uh, little hint, but if people want to know more about you or uh, get in touch with you, how can they do that? So my website is begravitas.com, B-E. It's like, it's like being in the gravitas. So B-E, gravitas, G-R-A-V-I-T-A-S.com. And maybe, I don't know if you will post that as well, but begravitas.com. And then, um, and my Instagram is at begravitas. We post a lot of things there and we have giveaways and we have like all kinds of, and it's all about like supporting the community and, um, and you can sign up for my newsletter through that as well. And um, yeah, I think that those are the main ways to get in touch. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Vanessa, I would love I to love... hear from anyone, anyone, whatever, whoever this resonated with, or if you have any questions, like feel free to contact me anytime. Perfect. Vanessa. I really loved our conversation and I'm sure we could do this for hours, <laughs> but you have to, to, get, to catch your son. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go. So thanks again for being my guest, uh, Vanessa, and uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you so much for having me. And likewise, it was, um, I loved being here and thank you.